Hi, my name is Mia and I'm a registered sleep technologist. Um, the duties that um, a sleep technologist does is that we set up patients for sleep studies and during our sleep studies we do record patients um, their blood oxygen saturations, their heart rate and rhythm, their brain waves, um, their muscle movement and the respiratory breathing that's coming from um, their nose, their mouth, the chest, and the abdomen. Um, we record all of this as real-time information that is recorded and it is sent to the nearby technologist. In other words, we receive this information and we observe the data and we document the information um, on our technologist uh, with what we call a, a piece of paper that shows what we do every half hour when we're monitoring our patients. Um, it's very important that we do monitor everything we see because the audio and video recording is on the whole time during the, their uh, sleep studies. Um, also, you know, this is a job that um, requires like really a night nighttime position. Um, it's a third shift you know, type of job and uh, we have patients that come in at night and they are um, able to come in at a time that is uh, convenient for the technologists and the patients where we just have them undressed for bed and we um, give them paperwork to fill out and um, sometimes patients have to watch a video while they're here and it's like a 20 minute video that talks about sleep apnea and the treatments for it. Um, after the patients you know watch the videos we also have a um, demonstration where we show them CPAP mask and the reason for that because we want to make sure that the patient is aware that they, if they need to be treated for CPAP then they're able to see ahead of time how does it feel to wear one um, is it comfortable, not comfortable, and they have an idea. So that way, if the doctor orders a study with CPAP titration, which is treatment for sleep apnea, then they're more prepared and more aware of what they need to wear. Um, some patients um, we treat um, in the middle of a night sleep study. So the first portion of the study is what we call baseline. Um, it just tells us the data of how much uh, we gather on the from the patient. Um, it gives us um, so many times they have to start breathing. It gives us a lot of information to say whether they should be treated right away or not because some patients are more severe than others. So what we do is just go ahead and see what we can get for the first portion of the night. And if we got enough to say that they're severe and met our protocol, we just go ahead and get them treated. And that way, the rest of the night they're in the bed sleeping and with the mask on. And that, that determines... Uh, different types of pressures that they need to be on that, that also um, really CPAP is called continuous positive airway pressure so it's really airway that we're trying to open up from the CPAP so the CPAP is you know forcing air into the airway so they be able to breathe better as they're sleeping at night and then uh, by the time the morning rolls around then um, we, the study is ended and they should be uh, able to leave the sleep lab and um, we go from there and get, give the information to the doctor and the doctor go from there and let the patient know um, how well they did for the sleep study. Um, the hours that usually for a night tech it would normally is like consisting of a 12 hour shift or a 10 hour shift because they have to be here to set the room up before the patient arrive. Um, so they, all, they do arrive and um, have everything ready for the, for the patient. Um, so this is a, you know, like I said, a nighttime job where you have to be able to stay up all night long, make sure you sleep all day, but you have to stay up all night long because it's very important to uh, watch the patient all night. Um, after a while, after I've been doing, you know, night shift job or any tech that have been doing night shift um, for like a seniority type of period, um, you can eventually work into a day shift position, but you'll do a little bit more when it comes to your job. You can also do what we also call scoring. Uh, scoring is a method that we use to look over a record after the patient has been discharged to go home and we just look to see um, 
what breathing effort they had, what problems they had. We look at everything before we hand the record over to the doctors. It's very important. We have to look at uh, just everything. Just and It's just very important to have this scoring process complete. And um, so when we get that done and give it to the doctor, that's what we do during daytime hours that I've been working. Right now, I am working 10-hour shifts, which is feasible and convenient for me. I can get a lot done because I can score, and also I can run NAP studies, and that's a totally different test. We also uh, run those studies because those are for patients that um, need to take NAPs because we're looking for a different diagnosis. We're looking for narcolepsy or excessive sleepiness. So we run NAPs as well as we run overnight sleep studies. Um, sometimes we even run daytime um, third shift studies because some people work night shift and we can go ahead and run those studies as well as we run at nights as well. Uh, stress level, I don't see much of a stress level unless when you're working on nights and you're brand new and you're trying to learn everything. You think it's hard, you think it's a lot. It is not hard, but it is a lot that you need to learn. And so maybe that's what can cause your stress level to go up a little bit. but. It is a lot. You have to know a lot about respiratory. You have to know um, just everything about cardiac. You have to know so much that's related to sleep. So that can cause the stress level to go a little bit higher. But once you learn everything on that level, it is easy. It is easy. It's not hard anymore. So you you know you're able if you're able to like I said stay awake during the night. Um, the job is very easy. Um, I did. Um, complete an 18 month training program and that program consists of learning um, um, everything that's related to the job. So in other words we had to train how to set up our patients, uh, we had to um, just learn the basic terminology of what, what respiratory meant, uh, what does um, sleep apnea meant. You're not just doing like one patient um, or one age, we consider for our type of job, we're going to be doing patients that's really from a pediatric patient all the way to geriatric patients. So you're going to be uh, see variety of type of patients and you know you just have to kind of like really know what you're doing um, as to making sure that you're making them feel comfortable. So we had to learn so much. You know, communication is important. After the 18-month training program that we got trained on the job to learn all everything that's supposed to be done for our job, um, then we was able to um, prepare to take like what they call a test to um, make sure that you were, you know, um, able to understand what you were doing with your job. So what we did, we kept taking tests to make sure we were able to pass and go on and go on and then take another test after that. But as a result, um, if you pass every test and you, and you start doing your job um, better as you know, new ones came up, like in other words, if you were able to apply CPAP to a patient, then at the CPAP there's another treatment option out there like bi-level uh, you know, treatment to a patient, which is another you know to treat sleep apnea as well so we had to learn all types of levels of this job and then as a result you just had to take a test so if you take this test and completed your 18 month training program then what they would call is board eligible. Board eligible meant that we had to prepare to take a board exam that um, they say that we were competitive in our job and we were called registered sleep technologists just really a lot of sleep centers are looking for that, especially accredited sleep centers. They do look at like if we have a lot of you know registered sleep technologists in the in their uh, sleep labs because it makes it looks good and you know really uh, everybody is able to uh, improve their uh, work you know to um, patients. So patients does look at that as well. So um, I guess what we probably didn't I think I probably didn't expect if my job was uh, to take so many tests. Maybe I didn't know there were so many tests involved. I think that's about it. It's just that we didn't really have a school to go to. I know there's schools available though, but we didn't have to have to go to a school where I learned uh, to be a sleep tech. I just learned, like I said, at a hospital for 18 months and then because um, I was on night shift and everything and I learned what I was supposed to do and I got to where I was at with no problems. All right. Well, the best part of, of my job, or the job you probably would like, well, they definitely got good pay because you, when you work night shift, you also you you normally get paid more money than working a, a different set of hours. You know, whether it's days or second shift. So 
I, I'm going to go ahead and just say really the best part is the money is really great. It's really nice money when you're working, you know, a night shift job or uh, you're going to have to be working weekends, uh, um, you know, just differential pays with all they look at. But And then also, you know, there's some nice, uh, you're going to, you know, run into some patients that um, are very, very nice and understanding, understand where you're coming from and uh, you're going to meet some nice people as well. Not just the money, but it's the people too. So, you know, you're able to help them. They like that. They really do. They like it when you're able to help them. So, that's that's a good thing about the job also. Um, only thing I can think of, worst part of the job is, at first, when you're trying to work night shift, it is hard because you're supposed to sleep all day to work all night. And I, I'm going to really, you know, really understand that. I had to train myself to make sure that I was able to stay awake the whole night long. And that's really, you know, just the worst part that I saw, you know, just working nights. Um, if you're interested in this field, you know, looking into the sleep uh, field for any reason, the best advice I'd like to give to you, if you can go, also go online and look up websites to, um, Look, you know, to get more information about being a, a sleep technologist and what sleep sleep technology offers. Um, one of them is called brpt.org. Also, another one is called AAST. Um, that's called American Academy of Sleep Technologists. Uh, we have another one called AASM. So there's more than one. So that's another one too. That's a big one. So just kind of, you know, look uh, look at those um, websites.